we built these falling disaster shells to go over the toilet in our guest bathroom. Falling shells over the toilet? Of course. We do everything possible to make our guests feel comfortable in our house. You know those snow globes, refrigerator magnets, and tchotchkes you see in souvenir shops and you sometimes wonder who on earth buys this stuff? It's us. We buy that stuff. We're those people. But there's a reason we buy them. Every time we go on a trip as a family, all five of us being present, we buy a cheap souvenir to commemorate that trip. Nothing expensive because we like to buy experiences, not things but these help us remember what we did. And over the years, we've acquired quite a few of them. And all of those souvenirs go on our falling shelves here in our guest bathroom. This one's from when we went cave exploring in Tennessee. This one's from a wigwam we stayed in on Route 66. This is from the world's tallest thermometer in Baker, California. And USS Iowa we went aboard that great battleship, the greatest we've ever built. And who could forget Vegas when we went and had our vows renewed with Elvis in a wedding chapel and broadcast it online. Each of these little things are from something that we did together as a family, and our history is right here. So when you go to our house, you can see our family history here in the bathroom, where you, it's appropriate to have this sort of thing in the bathroom. Before we remodeled this bathroom, we had an earlier, simpler version of these shelves. But now it's time to rebuild the falling disaster shelves. We can make them bigger, better, more disastrous. The first step in making falling disaster shelves is to make regular shelves. So I cut two four foot long oak boards into four two foot shelves, you know, like regular shelves. And then I use the miter saw to chop up those innocent two foot shelves into pieces of shelves because, well, disaster falling shelves are in pieces falling down the wall and we need a lot of different parts. But the miter saw wasn't enough. I also used the table saw to split individual shelves into pieces. So the shelves themselves are collapsing, just not end to end, but even lengthwise. We're trying to go for a 3D effect here where the shelves are coming out from the wall and all these angles are going to work for us later. But before any of that work could be done, all of those broken shelf pieces had to be sanded. You can see the rough layout here where the shelves are sort of collapsing in the middle and falling down the wall. This will be modified later. If these were normal shelves, we'd just stain them. Oddly enough though, falling disaster shelves were once not falling before the disaster, so they were normal shelves, which means we probably need to stain these because they were normal before they fell. So the formerly normal but now falling shelves are stained. many minutes later. These shelves are supposed to look like they're falling down. This is the upper left shelf and it's going to mount on the wall at an angle. And it's going to have a piece that's breaking off of it also falling down. So it's going to be like this, away from the wall a little bit, falling down the wall, like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this to the larger shelf. This won't be supported by the wall. The larger shelf will support it by the use of a couple of metal strips. And by metal strips, I mean nails. Pilot holes are used for the nails because we don't want to split our broken shelves. Then two two and a half inch long finishing nails are driven into those two pilot holes. This is half of the support this shelf will receive. The other half of that shelf support will come from two holes that we're going to drill into the shelf that's going to be mounted to the wall. Two holes are marked and drilled into the second shelf. This is where those two nails are going to fit. And once mounted, those two nails can be bent to give us a bent and crooked shelf. A little bit of wood glue is all that's needed to secure the two shelves to each other. The nails are driven into one board and the other one is held together by the wood glue. This is an exact carpentry, but then again, we are building shelves that are disintegrating and falling down the wall. So it's appropriate here. And now we have a bunch of bent and messed up shelves that will mount securely to the wall and will hold our stuff. The 
The final carpentry step is to drill the two holes in the back of each shelf that will be used to mount it to the wall. Each of our shelves has two holes drilled that will allow us to slide the shelf onto the metal rod that we're going to put in the wall. So this shelf is almost ready to go. The, the falling shelf part is done, the metal piece is in, so it's, it's hanging off like it's, like it's a disaster in progress. What we need now is polyurethane. So to polyurethane it, I'm going to use one of these holes in the back and hang this off of a piece of wood. And I'm going to use water-based polyurethane that dries super fast and give it multiple coats of this before we mount this on the wall. next day. The polyurethane has dried so now it's time to mount these shelves to the wall. How are we going to do that? We're going to use these drywall anchors. These are the type that you can just screw into the wall and once the drywall anchor is in we're going to take this 632 threaded rod that I've cut for two and three quarters inches and we're going to screw this rod into this anchor when it's in the wall. When we do that it'll look like this. It'll be screwed in and you see how this spreads out so this will anchor it in the wall and then we're going to have this piece sticking straight out. We've already cut on the back of these boards mounts so all I have to do is just slide the shelf onto the rod like this see and this is how we're going to hold these shelves up. These shelves aren't going to hold a lot of weight it's not like we're putting encyclopedias or anything like that on it or uh, heavy stuff this is lightweight so it doesn't have to hold much and this is enough to hold it up. Two of these for each one of the large shelves is plenty. So all I have to do is put these in, get them ready, and then just go slide the shelves on. The miter saw's metal cutting disc is used to cut the threaded rod to the length that we need to hold these shelves up. A total of 24 pins are required for the 15 shelves we're gonna hang. Welcome back to the bathroom where there is no way to film this easily. We're here to put the studs in the wall so we can put the shelves up. To screw the threaded rod into the anchor, we're going to use each threaded rod as a drill bit. Because anything can be a drill bit, if you apply enough power. The sequence is, drill a pilot hole in the sheetrock. Drill the anchor into the sheetrock. Drill the threaded rod into the anchor. And then detach the threaded rod. This one didn't work out so well, but I eventually got good at it. Again, this isn't precise carpentry, but we're going for a disaster look here, so my struggles here are actually artistically helpful. And that is what our threaded rod looks like when it's inserted in the anchor. When all of the anchors and threaded rods are in place, it's a fairly simple matter to just slide the shelf onto the threaded rod. Looks like it's supposed to be there. Look at there, falling shelves. They really do look like there's been some kind of a disaster and they're falling down the wall, don't they? Well, now it's time to put our cheap souvenirs on our cheap shelves using very expensive glue. Just kidding. We're using hot glue. So there they are, our brand new falling shelves that fill the wall of our bathroom here and are sure to freak out anybody who comes in here. Actually, that's the job of the gearbox, but between the gearbox and the falling shelves, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in here. Really, the only thing we're missing in here is the flamethrower. That's actually a future project. But anyway, that's the project. It was incredibly cheap, and this is our family travel history here. And as you can see, these new shelves give us a lot more space to put a lot more family memories. And it's, it's just great to see this when you come into the bathroom and here's everywhere we've been. And I'm thinking of a couple of places I need to go to get um, 
to get souvenirs, so uh, I'll be heading to eBay later tonight to get more things to put on these brand new shelves. Thanks to our patrons, you help us build things like this, and we really appreciate it. Remember, patrons get extra content. After every project video, we have a commentary video where we talk about the ups and downs, what went right, what went wrong, and a little more background on the projects. And we also put out a video every month talking about what we're building for the next month. So if you want to see that sort of thing and support us as we build weird stuff, become a patron. If not, hey, enjoy the videos. We're glad you're here. We like having interesting and unusual things in our house, and in our case, most of our artwork reflects us. It's something about us. This case is our family travel history. So if you come here to the guest bathroom, you see the, the gearbox that's spinning and flashing and everything, and you see the, the falling shells with all these cool little souvenir trinkets on everything, and it's just interesting and it's colorful and it's different. Uh, it was also stupid cheap and pretty easy to build. You want to build stuff like this around your house. Make your house yours. Don't just go buy something off the shelf. Make something that reflects you. But if you like what you're seeing here, you like this type of thing, check out our other videos. We've got a lot that we've built. Strange things. And so we'd love for you to see those. If you like the channel, like and subscribe. Ring that bell so you won't miss uh, updates because we do them on a regular basis. And that's it for this one. Go build something like this. You won't regret it.